San Diego, dubbed America's finest city, offering miles and miles of a beautiful coastline, sunshine pretty much all year round, and endless activities to engage in. But you know what they say, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So let's take a look at Sandy's quote-unquote skeletons in the closet, if you will, that could prevent you from moving there altogether. The cost of living. Definitely one of the most significant cons for those on a budget. You need to make some serious cash to be able to afford living here, possibly in the six-figure range, or at least have a few filthy rich relatives as an alternative. Housing prices have gone up tremendously in the past five years. Now, even a decent-sized, not necessarily the newest house, could end up listing you at $650,000 to $700,000. Plus, you'll be shilling out big lumps of money for repair work. Just keep that in mind. And living close to the beach might be more or less a far-fetched dream for some folks, because even a starter shoreline house will cost you about $1 million. That's insane! Even if you do decide not to buy property, renting will still end up costing you a pretty penny. Think about it like this. For just a studio apartment, you're going to be paying around $2,500 per month. In comparison, Florida's two-bedroom apartment goes for $2,600, and the security deposit amount in, and you're going to be looking at about $5,000 to rent a teeny-weeny tiny space. You can always try and share a place with roommates, but that's all going to depend on who you get. Nobody wants to come home from a long, hard, stressful day at work and find their sanctuary completely trashed. You know, bottles scattered around, empty chip bags and banana peels everywhere, possibly underwear hanging from a ceiling if there wasn't a stripping going Going on after enjoying a shot or two, and your cat is hiding under your bed, scared out of his mind. Bad neighbors can make your life a living hell, so choose them responsibly. As for any other expenses, it can also be very tricky, as San Diego is one of the most expensive cities concerning food, transportation, clothing, and recreation. And besides that high price tag, the goods get taxed out of this world. High taxes. Oh, yeah, this city is notoriously one of the worst when it comes to being taxed. The sales tax is almost 8%, and you get taxed enormously on your income, and even though property taxes may not seem high at first, about 1%, the buyer ends up paying a lot more for a place than the national average just because the real estate price is so high. When the situation with COVID-19 had happened in 2020, a lot of people lost their long-term jobs and were forced to foreclose on their homes. Some even ended up on the streets with nowhere to go. Homelessness has always been an issue with the Sandy area, but it has reached new heights as the unemployment rates went up. Homeless people. Be careful not to trip over what may seem like an old tarp or carpet lying on the sidewalk as you try to rush to get to your morning Starbucks before hitting the office. That may be a homeless person sleeping with nowhere else to go. COVID-19 had caused a dramatic surge in the number of bums flooding the street, and as a result, the drug traffic became more of a problem than what it was before the pandemic. Now, that's one reason why many hobos don't want to go to shelters, since they've all been screened for drugs. Less homeless in shelters means more on the streets, and according to the latest demographics report, there's around 3,800 vagabonds in the San Diego streets alone, and an additional 3,600 in various shelters getting the necessary help that they need. The number of homeless people skyrocketed also because fewer of them were being arrested and incarcerated since the COVID-19 pandemic struck. Local officials are also thinking that it's best not to touch the encampments as of yet for safety precautions, leaving people where they are and making the spread of the coronavirus that much worse. Everybody is concentrated in one area, so it's easier to control the virus situation that way. Not the safest city to live in. San Diego is located very close to the Mexican border, in fact, the closest Mexican city being Tijuana. Therefore, the drug problem has always been relevant in the city. Drug trafficking in certain areas did end up creating more crime, making it where some neighborhoods are not even safe to walk through during the daytime. There was also a time when the sunny California city was dubbed the meth capital of the U.S., as the illegal methamphetamine drug trafficking had reached its peak in the 80s and 90s. According to police reports, there were about 91 gangs in San Diego in 2014. Now, it's close to 100. As today, there is an estimated 5,000 gang members in the San Diego area alone. What truly stuns us, though, is that the youngest gang members are nowadays about 13 or 14 years old when they first enter it, and they usually tend to stick in there for a long time. Part of the reason for this being is that very often the older mob members suck the teens right in, especially if they're related by blood, a part of the family. The vast majority of crimes committed in the city are not homicides, but rather property crimes, like armed robberies, arsons, and motor vehicle theft. 
It's very possible that you may leave your car overnight somewhere in a notoriously bad San Diego area like East Village, Cortez Heights, or Columbia, and upon returning to get it in the morning, you may simply not find it there. In a better case scenario, your hubcaps or the actual tires could even go missing. Can't do much without a car in San Diego, hard to get around with no car. The public transportation system is not well developed in San Diego, albeit it does have a variety of transit options like buses, trains, trolleys, and unfortunately, none of them are rock solid reliable. Therefore, if you can't afford a car, San Diego may not be the best moving option for you. If you plan to meet your friend over coffee one brilliant July afternoon on the other side of the city, then you can expect to get there by Christmas. Just kidding, it's not that slow, but hey, it's pretty close. You have to plan for at least a two to three hour commute just to get to your destination on time. More than likely, you're gonna have to end up transferring from one type of transportation to the other. And as far as costs, well, expect to shell out about 100 to 150 bucks a month for transit rides. Another option if you don't own a vehicle is to take Ubers. It's a pretty convenient taxi system and you can end up finding it in any US town you can think of, even in remote suburbs. But it does come with a pretty hefty price tag compared to the city transport system. One of the taxis and transportation's advantages is that it does drive you, not the other way around, so there's no traffic stress. Oh, and speaking of which, traffic can get pretty bad here. Traffic is a pain in the neck. Oh yeah, being prepared to spend a significant amount of time on the road commuting to and from work. With each San Diego family owning a few vehicles, the number of cars on the road can get pretty crazy with the traffic being this bad, you wish you worked from home. Oh, by the way, check with your boss if that's an option because you never know. It's no fun being sandwiched in between cars on both sides like a piece of bacon between two hamburger bun halves. Honestly, the latter sounds like a much better option if you ask me. Moving at the speed of a snail, it gets old pretty quick. And with a large volume of cars on the road, you can only imagine what the city's parking situation might be. Parking is an utter nightmare. Now, this one goes hand in hand with the above mentioned traffic issue, it only makes sense that it's hard to find a spot, especially during the week, anywhere close to the center of the city. On some occasions, you might be cruising the streets for no less than 20 to 30 minutes before you find anywhere to sit. Even if you do, it'll probably be quite a distance from where you need to go. Therefore, be prepared to walk, like a lot. Well, at least you don't have to cross the whole country on foot, although it may seem like it to be able to get to your vehicle, just a few blocks. On the other side, at least you get to shed a few pounds here and there from your daily commutes. In case you don't have enough patience going in circles like a hamster in a ferris wheel, then you might try to opt for a bicycle or motorcycle. The former is a longtime European favorite, which is how they have been doing it across the pond for many years while keeping in shape as well. It's particularly enjoyable to hop on a bike during warm summer months, and it never really gets below the 50s in San Diego during the year, with an average temp in the high 60s, low 70s. Summer all year round, and this gets old after a while. If you're dreaming of a white Christmas and you want to be able to see stunning foliage with gorgeous colors in the fall, then San Diego may not be for you. The temperatures are always late spring, early summer like, and it very rarely gets below 60s in the winter. Hence, no Thanksgiving colors and no Christmas snow. Luckily, there is one option if you do want to experience cooler seasons as well. You can go up to the mountains in close proximity to the city, just a couple of hours driving distance. After a while, some people find that it's getting old not having all four seasons in their lives. Might feel like too much good weather is becoming quite annoying. Everybody's different though, so you may have to choose for yourself what suits your lifestyle best. If you would much rather ditch the skis for a nice bathing suit and a surfboard, be aware of this one detail we're about to mention. The ocean's quite cold. Don't expect the water temperature to be like Florida or the Bahamas. In the wintertime, it stays in the 50s and 60s range, and in the summer, it rarely gets above 68 degrees, which is still pretty chilly for most folks. More so, if you're not a big fan of big waves, San Diego's waters might not suit your idea of a perfect swim in the calm seas, and not to mention that the water temperature is a problem. There's also something else lurking in the ocean waiting for you to make a wrong move. By the way, it is the shark family. Stingray attacks. People who are extremely allergic to any kind of bites, be it an insect or maybe sea creature, should avoid swimming in the San Diego coastal areas. The reason is because of stingray attacks. These are very pretty but sneaky fish that can camouflage themselves right in the sand and any swimmer could just accidentally step on them, causing them to attack, since they're thinking it's deliberately done. And the sting spot hurts a lot. In fact, you're going to feel like you're being slashed with a razor blade. Ow! 
ouch. But no worries, the venom's not gonna kill you. In 95% of bite cases, there are no serious consequences. The wound is just going to be very crampy for a while, even after you apply some kind of pain reliever cream. If you are prone to bite allergies, then check it out immediately after the nearest urgent care center or a hospital emergency department. Therefore, if stingrays are not on your friend list, then avoid the San Diego area like the plague.